Maganda pangalan. Fides. Ibang translation. Genuine. Active. Res ab genuine and active faith results in a changed life. Agree mo ba kayo to? Ang uh, tunay at aktibong pananampalataya ay nagre-resulta ng panibagong buhay. We are saved by faith in Jesus who is revealed to us through His Word. Nakikita po natin niya sa kanyang salita. True faith I just would like to emphasize, lagi ko pong binibigyan siya ng adjective, no? True faith, hindi po yung bad na. True faith leads to action. Ano po yung action na yun? Yung good works or deeds na tinatawag natin obedience. At ang obedience na to, hindi po ito sandali lang, remote occasion lang, parang annual lang, parang holiday lang, yung pagiging, pagiging masunurin natin. It persists throughout our lifetime and brings about good works. At yung pagsunod, esok po yan. Katapos po natin magkaroon ng tama, matuwid, tunay, at totoong pananampalataya. Yan po dyan nakalagay sa ating introduction. Where there is genuine faith, active saving faith, there will always be good works. Okay? Dogmatic po dapat tayo doon. It's been firm. When there's genuine, active, saving faith, there will always be good works. Now, Apostle James used Abraham and Rahab as models of dynamic, genuine, saving faith. Since both of them, ano po, responded in faith to the message of God. Now, what can we learn from them? Gusto ko lang po natin tingnan yung dalawang kar karakter na to na malayo ang magpat ang kanilang pamumuhay at ang, kanilang, ang nangyari sa kanila ay malayo rin ang panahon ng kanilang pagitan ng nangyari po. Hindi sila lang magkakilala and probably they were never met in their lifetime. Now, James illustrates yung, yung genuine faith through the lives of two Bible characters sa ating text. First is Abraham and second is Rahab. Now, makikita natin yung dalawang contrasting personalities dito. Una, Abraham was a Jew. Jew or Israelites are chosen nation. Rahab, on the other hand, is a Gentile. Yung Jew and Gentile, hindi sila magka-fellowship. So, the Jew, the Jews think they are chosen nation and outside the country or nation of Israel, others are all sinners, Gentiles. Okay. Abraham was godly man. No doubt about that. Rahab was a sinful woman. Actually, ano mong trabaho niya? She was a prostitute. Sa uh, Korea, yung mga nagsasalamin, ay nagsalaminan. <laughs> Puyong trabaho niya. Okay. Abraham was a friend of God, while Rahab belonged to the enemies of God. Now, what do they have in common? Ano yung pagkakaparehas? Both of them exercise saving faith in God. For faith that is not exercised in a real world is not real faith. Faith, genuine, active faith that is not exercised in a real world is not a real faith. Now, let us talk about this very short thing. The Lawa, Bible characters. Both of them, their faith. The faith of Abraham. Bago po siya naging Abraham, Abraham lang siya. Okay? In James chapter 2, verse 21 to 34, it says, Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled when it says, when it says Abraham believed God it was credited to him as righteousness, he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Okay. Just give you the background. Genesis chapter 15 verses 1 to 9, especially verse 6. Yung tinesinet ko sa inyo kanina. 
especially verse 6. And Abraham believed God. Okay? And it was credited to him as righteousness. Tignan niyo yung spelling ng pangalan niya, okay? At this text, Genesis 15. Abraham believed the Lord and it credited to him as righteousness. Si James, yung sinulat niya yung kanyang portion of that scriptures, verses 21 to 24, nireverse niya yung events and places na nangyari sa buhay ni Abraham. Inuna ni James yung sacrifice. Inunang sinabi ni James yung ginawa ni Abraham na pagsasakripisyo sa kanyang anak, which is actually a, 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 an act of faith. Di ba? Work po yun. Yung verse 21 yung deed, sa verse 23 yung faith. Doon sa text natin kanina. Yung babasahin po natin yung Genesis chapter 15, don't be afraid, Abraham said. I mean, the Lord said to Abraham, I am your, your, I am your shield, your very great reward. Sabi ni Abraham, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one you will met in my state, Melissa, the master. And Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant my house will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own blessed and will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up the sky, count the stars, and you can count them. Then he said, So shall you for from speedy. Wala pa siyang anak diyan. Pinangahuwat na siya ng Panginoon na kanyang lahi ay magiging ano? Parang mga between sa langit. Hindi mabibilang. Nasabihin sa iyo, maraming, magkakaroon ka ng maraming apo. At the age of what? Almost 90. Wala pa siyang anak. Pinangahuwa siya ng ganito. Anong response niya? Verse 6. Believed. Okay? Abraham believed the Lord at faith. Okay? And it was credited to him as righteousness. Sabi ng Panginoon, I am the Lord who brought you out of poor and told the to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abraham sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord bring me an favor then, so to speak. Na po ang nangyari. Again, James, inunay kayo sa verse 21 yung act of deed. Wala kayong makikita dyan sa text na yan na may ginawa sa Abraham na good works. Pero ba? Just faith. Okay? Believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Binigyan siya ng promise. Verses 5 and 6. Your seed or descendants, tinatawag natin, magiging numerous. So how did Abraham respond? Sabi ko nga, He believed in the Lord and the Lord counted it that to him as righteousness. In, Je in Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 4, wala po dyan, makikita po natin, nung kasi pinag-aralan ko ito, bata pa ako sa pain, yung James chapter 2, verse 21, the 26. Yung faith without work is dead. Nakopius din ako. Sabi ko, diba, kailangan niya, kailangan niya talaga ng kawang mabuti para para maligtas. But if you're gonna read Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 4, because it is not there, and I just want to read it to you, my, my brothers and sisters. What shall we say then? Verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had were of the glory, but not before God. For what said the scripture? Ito yan. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to him that work is the reward that we call to grace but of death. God put that faith in him. He trusted him. Abraham was actually bankrupt. No? Wala po siya para ng palataya dati. Pag sinabi daw kung counted, the Lord counted to him as righteousness. Counted yung Sabi ng mga komentarista, counted is a legal financial term na ibig sabihin to put into one's account para magta-transfer ka. At that time, before this, Abraham's spiritual bank book was empty. Bankrupt siya. But when he trusted God, ayun, God put righteousness in him. So he did not work for his righteousness. 
He just believed and God gave that gift. Now, punta tayo doon sa obedience. So, tingnan niyo yung faith, ha? This is faith. Yung sinasabi ni James ngayon sa verse 22 o 21, makikita natin dito sa obedience. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 to 14. Medyo mahaba-haba ko to. For those of you who know, who knew, ito po yung account kung saan ang, ang, ang Diyos ay inutusan niya si Abraham na ialay ang kanyang anak na si sa ay, para maging uh, kanyang burnt offering. Okay? Ito they travel for like three days and then pumunta sila doon sa bundok na yun. Now, how can we tell if a person is justified by faith kung ang, ang nag-uusap naman ay ang Diyos at siya, privately. No? Yung pong prangyari kay Abraham, this is private, this is between he and the Lord. No? Kaya nga yung kanyang mga servants, kung babasahin yung Genesis chapter 22, hindi nila alam kung ano ang magiging mangyayari. Nung nandun na sila sa place, hiniwan sila ni Abraham at uh, yung dito kayo, tayo nyo kami, punta kami dito sa bundok, mag-aaray kami ng anak ko. They don't know what's happening. Abraham's examples answers the important question that the, the, the justified person has a changed life and obey God's will. His faith is demonstrated by works. Now, nung basahin po natin yung verses 24 kanina, 22, 23, 24 sa ating text, I would just like to read that once again to you. Pag-ibalik na dyan yung James chapter 2. Was our father, Abraham, was righteous for what he did when he offered his act the altar? This is the action. This is the faith. Now, tingnan niyo po yung action, okay? Just like we're going to chronology to. When, when Abraham went to the mountain to offer Isaac, that was 25 years after Genesis 15, 6. After he said in the scripture, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him righteous, as a righteousness. 25 years later, dun po yung sinasabing ito. Ito, nangyari, 25 years later, nag-offer siya. In-offer niya ang kanyang anak. He was still childless, tanda niyo ha, when he believed God, and God credited to him as righteousness, he was childless. Then, in verse 21, when he offered his son Isaac, that was 25 years, O oh, Genesis 15, ang account of, of offering is Genesis 22. Abraham was not obeying God's difficult command because he wants to be saved, but is actually an action of faith. A result of this, resulta ng kanyang pananampalataya na Ganun na lamang ang kanyang paghawak sa pangako ng Diyos na bibigyan siya ng maraming mga anak. Now in the future, even his, his nation will be great. Now we threw his son, Isaac. Na nung, ginaw, nung, nung, nung ginawa niya yung pananampalataya, yung maniwala siya sa Diyos, wala pa siyang anak. Now when the time of comes that the Lord or our God tested his faith, 25 years later, his obedience is a proof na ligtas na siya dahil nabuhay na siya sa pananampalataya sa Diyos at sa kanyang salita at hindi lang sa paningin. Bakit? Kapatid, pinangakuhan ka ng Diyos na magiging ang iyong mga descendants ay maraming marami pero wala ka pang anak ni isa. O yung anak mo, hindi pa yun ang sinasabi ng Diyos. It took him a while to have that. Abraham's offering of Isaac is a proof of faith. It was an evidence na ang kanyang pananampalataya ay buhay. Sabi nga nung isang araw na-share ko sa inyo, walang isa man sa atin, palagay ko, 
nagagawin ng ginawa ni Abraham na i-offer yung iyong anak kahit dalawa pa yan, yung isa lang di ba? sabihin niyo pa, Lord, ako na lang na lang po yung anak now, James okay, is not teaching justification by works but the true faith moves the heart and regulates the life true faith, tanda mo ito, does not lie dormant in open receiving, ang tunay na pananampalatay hindi siya natutulog kundi nakikita siya sa aktibong pagsunod. Okay? Ang tunay na pananampalataya ay nagre-resulta ng mga gawang mabuti, subalit, ang mga gawang mabuti na ito ay hindi ito ang makakapagligtas sa atin. Amen po ba? Faith in God brings salvation. Amen? Amen. Obedience demonstrate our faith na ang ating faith ay genuine, hindi faith. Okay? Okay. Faith brings salvation. And obedience demonstrates the faith that faith is genuine or alive. Kaya nga sabi ni James, faith without work is dead. Now, God pronounced righteousness because of it. God pronounced Abraham righteous because of his faith, not because of his action. Tanda niyo yung action, ha? God and Abraham believe God and is granted to him righteousness. At this point, mga kapatid, walang anak si Abraham, hindi pa niya iniaalay ang kanyang anak. Isa isa. Before he offered Isaac in verse 21, nakaroon na muna siya ng pananampalatay. So the result of Abraham wholeheartedly obeyed God's command for him to offer his son is a result of faith 25 years in the making. Abraham's walk of faith with God was brought into fruition, was matured because of his willingness to offer Isaac. Sabi nga po sa verse 24, di ba yan? You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Yun ang conclusion. A man is proven to be upright by his goodness not only by statement of faith. A real or living faith obeys God and proves itself daily in, in, in our works. Ang tunay na pananampalataya, kapatid, yung tunay at buhay na pananampalataya ay ang pagsunod sa Diyos o sumusunod tayo sa Diyos at napapatunayan natin ito sa ating buhay araw-araw. And ito, only an operative, fruit-bearing faith is saving faith. No? Man, man is not justified by the intellectual ascent to certain truth. Katulad nito, marami sa atin, tanong mo yan, wala lang sa mga Pilipino, naniniwala ka bang may Diyos? Anong sagot? Anong sagot ng maraming Pilipino? Opo. Mayroon po silang tamang perception kung sino ang Diyos na siya ang lumalang ng langit at lupa pero hindi natin makikita sa kanila yon yung bunga ng kanilang paniniwala dahil tunay, hindi tunay yung kanilang pananampalataya. Paano raw makuprove yung faith? May isang kwento na palagay ko narinig niyo na yung kung paano pinapatunayan ng isang tao ang kanyang pananampalataya. Sirkus. Alam niyo yung sirkus, ha? Some of you have watched that. Di ba ba yung mga sirkerong nag, nag sumasakay ng monocycle sa lubid, ah, sa alambre? Ah, ah, sa lubid, di alambre. Yung, alam niyo yung monocycle, di ba? Yung isang, isang, isang gulong lang na, na bisikleta. Tapos, tumutuloy sila sa, hindi alambre, sa lubid. Oh, ah, dahil, <laughs> Kaya sabi ko, yung galing-galing naman ng sirkero. Sabi nung nanonood, galing-galing, galing-galing. Kaya narinig siya. Sige, ba talagang magaling ako? Naniniwala ka ba sa akin na kaya kong tumawid mula dito? Ang ganda, oh, yuu, oh, oh, galing-galing mo nga eh. Ah, di tumawid. O kaya kong bumalik, oo, oh, galing-galing mo nga eh. Sumay ka sa likod ko. Sumay ka sa likod ko. Tapos tawid ako. Ano reaction ng manonood? Sumay ba siya? Hindi <laughs> <laughs> siya sa sakay. <laughs> Marami sa mga Pilipino gano'n, naniniwalang may Diyos, pero hindi na pinapaniwalaan kung anong kaya gawin ng Diyos sa buhay nila. 
Ang, ang kapatid natin, o ang ang